In week one of lecture, we talked about simple induction, and we showed how to use this proof technique to prove things about all natural numbers. However, the last example we saw in class, the one with the triominoes, showed us how to use induction not just to prove things about all natural numbers, but also things about just subsets of natural numbers. This involved a pretty subtle use of induction. And so I'm going to spend a few minutes today to talk about these subtleties in greater detail and hopefully give you a deeper understanding of what induction is actually all about. So first of all, recall the domino metaphor that I gave when I first introduced induction. We had a sequence of dominoes that we all wanted to fall, each domino, say, numbered with a natural number starting in zero. And two things were necessary to prove that all the dominoes would fall. First, we needed to ensure that we would tip over the first domino, that somehow we were going to push domino zero over. And then we had to prove these links between the dominoes. That is, when domino zero falls, so does domino one. Then when domino one falls, so does domino two, etc. We formalized this into our induction proof technique, which really consisted of two parts. The blue part, we called a base case, proving that p of zero was true. And then these links, between dominoes or between natural numbers, we prove those in the induction step. Which, if you recall, for every natural number, we showed that if p of k is true, then p of k plus 1 is also true. And these two things together were enough to show that the predicate held for all natural numbers. Now, this was great when we wanted to prove something for all natural numbers. But of course, sometimes the predicate we'd like to prove is not true for all natural numbers. It's only true for a subset of them. For example, what if we wanted to prove a statement of the form for all n greater than or equal to 2, p of n, where here implicitly n is some natural number still. So we're still talking about natural numbers, but only a subset of them. We're excluding 0 and 1. We can still use induction to prove what we'd like. Because if we recall our domino metaphor, only one thing really needs to change. We don't want all of the dominoes to fall down now. All we want are the dominoes from 2 onwards to fall. And we can do that by starting off the chain, not by pushing down domino 0, but by pushing down domino 2, and having the links remain the same, every domino falling causing the next one to fall. And what does the induction proof look like? Well, all that needs to change is the base case. Now we're going to start off by proving p of 2 rather than p of 0. The induction step remains the same, except we only need to show that the links hold when k is greater than or equal to 2. That is, we don't care about these links over here, because they're not important to us. We don't need to use them to prove what we want to prove. So that's changing the base case. But what about changing the induction step? We can do that too. And our base case remained the same, starting at 0. But now, somehow, our dominoes skipped over each other, so that when the 0 fell, somehow it pushed the 2 down, and the 2 pushed the 4 down and the 4 pushed, I haven't drawn it here, but the 6 down, like that. That is, if our induction step was now p of k implies p of k plus 2, rather than k plus 1. And I said our base case is still 0 here in this example. 
So if this happened, what exactly would we be showing? Well, it's not too hard to see that if this were the case, what we'd really be showing is for all even numbers, p of n holds. Now, here's the subtlety that came up in class. Let me rewrite that induction step for you. Notice that we haven't assumed anything about k, it's just some natural number. So in fact, the links that we've proven here work for any k, not just even k. That means that the picture we had on the previous slide was a little misleading. Because the picture that we had before showed the even links, 0 to 2, 2 to 4, etc. And certainly these links are part of this induction step. But because we haven't assumed anything about k here, in fact, we've proven these links as well. p of 1 implies p of 3, p of 3 implies p of 5, p of 5 implies p of 7, etc. And the key point that I want to make here is that this induction step, this proof that for all k, p of k implies p of k plus 2, that can happen independently of the base case. These red arrows here, they can happen independently of where we start. Now, a lot of you are probably wondering, well, if the induction step works for all k, does that mean that p is true for all k? And the answer is... No. And once you understand why, you'll have truly mastered induction. Remember that every induction proof consists of two parts, the induction step and the base case. And here it's the base case that really matters in determining what it is we're actually proving. On the previous slide, we had this base case. And from this and the induction step, we got that p of n was true for all even numbers. You can imagine this in our domino model as once we push down 0, then 2 falls, then 4, then 6, then 8, and we're following these top links. Never mind that these bottom links hold. If we never touch any of these odd dominoes, none of them will fall down. On the other hand, suppose that we didn't push down 0. Instead, suppose we push down 3 to start with. That is, suppose our base was actually p of 3. Then what would happen? Well, we'd push down 3, and then 5, and then 7, and then 9. We'd hit all odd numbers after 3. So what our proof would show is that for all odd numbers greater than or equal to 3, p of n holds. So to sum up, there are two important takeaways from this video. The first is that, like in the triomino example, you'll often find cases where the induction step and the base case can be proved independently of one, of, of one another. That is, you don't need to know anything from the induction step to prove the base case and you don't even need to know anything about the base case to prove the induction step. The second and arguably more important lesson is, depending on what the base case and the induction step are, we can control what set of numbers we're proving something about. Or conversely, if we're given a question which requires us to prove something about only a subset of the natural numbers and not all of them, then we can take that into account simply by modifying our base case and or modifying our induction step. Thanks for watching and have a great day.